Well, if you're in the market for a new phone, you may be in luck. Apple's iPhone 12 Pro Max and iPhone 12 Mini are available for pre-order today. For more on this, we want to bring in Robert Muller. He's an enterprise hardware analyst at RBC. And Robert, iPhone sales, they were a weak spot in Apple's earnings report last week. There was some talk that consumers were waiting for this 5G cycle to upgrade their phones. How big of a success do you think the iPhone 12 lineup is going to be for Apple? Yeah, overall, we're quite positive on this 5G cycle. You know, we're, we are definitely in that super cycle camp and, and not just this first year. You know, we think that over the, the coming years, this is really going to be a long sustained upgrade cycle. If you look at last quarter, it, it was a little bit of a dead quarter for them when you have, you know, no new releases. It's a little bit, you know, harder comp because you typically have a September uplift, you know, at least for the last week or two of the quarter. So I, I don't think I would look at it so much as a disappointment. Uh, people are always looking forward. So, you know, the stock gets valued. So, you know, with this upcoming lineup, you know, we expect a pretty solid, uh, you know, quarter coming up. It might be a little bit messy because, as we know, there's a staggered release. Uh, you know, previously before the iPhone 10, there was a staggered release and it didn't seem to hurt them. You know, it's a record quarter for iPhone revenue. So we're still pretty positive. You know, it might be a little bit noisy because of supply chain considerations. But if we look out the next six, you know, nine, 12 months, you know, we're, we're not too concerned about the, you know, the ultimate level. And, and you talk about what 29% of iPhone users are considering 5G or as our CEO says, 5G. But I got to ask you, on Monday, we get this uh, you know, potential new iMac. And I'm one of those people. Last Sunday, I kid you not, I ordered a new iMac after eight and a half years. And then they announced this thing. And now I'm thinking cancel the order because I may not get the old version with the Intel chip. Uh, it wouldn't come till December. Should I wait for the new iMac? Uh, how long with the Apple chip? I mean, are there going to be people like me who may screw things up for Apple? I don't think so. I think that you're going to have just a regular upgrade cycle. I, I think most people probably aren't going to be able to tell the difference between you know the, the Apple-based chip or the Intel chip. Yes, there, there could be improved performance, but that would be really any annual upgrade would have better performance. You know, maybe a tighter ecosystem in terms of app development on the you know on the Mac having a the same architecture between the, the Mac and the phone, and the iPad. But I think for most people, you're not going to really notice it. Maybe, you know, there's a little bit of a slowdown. People might change their orders, you know, maybe upgrade or wait for discounts. But, you know, all in all, I think that, you know, the most important thing is having people who upgrade, have people that stay in the ecosystem and continue to buy, not just this current year, but, you know, four or five years from now when you're looking to upgrade to a new computer. Robert, what about this quarter? Because Apple didn't provide guidance for it. And we know the holiday season is so important for Apple. What do you think it's going to look like for them? So the hard thing is because of supply chain considerations, which I've already touched on, you know, there is a staggered release in terms of when the phones are going to be available, you know, how many people are waiting. So it's hard because, you know, like, yes, the guidance does matter, but this is not a new development. They haven't provided guidance, you know, basically all of this year. On you know pandemic related concerns, and it does make sense if you're worried about your supply chain or, or the initial demand. You know, there's not additional stimulus as of yet. You know, that could always change if there was a you know sort of a lame duck stimulus package that was passed, or even early into the next year. So it, it, you think we think that over time, it's really just going to even out. Um, again, the quarter could be messy, but there are things from the supply chain, for instance, that could you know distort sales and just really just delay them. But you know, the most important number is: does that install base grow? Are people upgrading this year? Are people going to upgrade in two, three, four years going forward and just staying within the ecosystem? Uh, it, it, Apple is not Samsung. I'm thinking of the launch of the Samsung foldable phone that flopped. Is there a concern that <laughs> Apple could possibly have a hiccup like that with the launch of these new iPhone 12s? So there hasn't been a, a, a major form factor change, really. You know, the, it, yes, the sides are a little bit different, but for the most part, it's the same phone that their customers have, you know, grown grown to appreciate. Our survey work considered uh, suggests that about ninety percent of iPhone customers either definitely or very likely staying within the ecosystem. So the, you know, the thought of customer defections on a phone flop is really not up there for us. There's you know, with multiple different phones available right now, there's really a phone for everyone's preference. You know, whether you want small or large or or less expensive, more expensive. So I think that there's a place for most people within the Apple family. You know, you talk about being stuck. I'm one of them and I, I do love my iPhone, but I'm terrified if I ever switched, I'd lose all the photos because everything's in the cloud. Um, there's also the potential though, I think you point out for you know, the health apps and the health component that Apple is, is, is getting into with this. Tell us more about that. Yeah, and, and that was actually, you know, in our view, an underappreciated part of the story, uh, not to get on the, the Peloton 
uh, trend or anything, but Fitness Plus actually looks a little bit more positive uh, based on her survey work. We did an analysis that, you know, if you have about 20% of watch customers sign up for Fitness Plus, you know, it could be a $3 billion revenue opportunity, increase EPS by 2% in and of itself over the next three years, which for a company the size of Apple is actually a pretty meaningful amount. Uh, but our survey work actually suggests that about 17% of people are definitely going to sign up for the fitness program. Another 7% are planning to get it through the bundle, and about another 17% are strongly considering. So there, there might be a lot of upside to sort of what was our base expectation in terms of the fitness plus adoption. Remember, on the earnings call, we heard Tim Cook. He hinted a little bit, I guess, at future products that we could get this year. Apple has an event coming up next week. What are you expecting to hear? You know, my expectations are really going to be around the Mac, the new, you know, the new silicon based uh, Mac product that they're putting out there. There could be smaller announcements. You know, there's uh, sort of additional headphone products, you know, like sort of like a, you know, an iteration of the Beat Studio, for instance. Uh, you know, that, that, that's potential, uh, you know, but for the most part, we're really just focused on Mac. You know, they've done a few, uh, a couple, uh, you know, smaller events already this year, one more, one more product. I think really just to get the time to get this new Mac product because, you know, the, the, proprietary silicon chip it has been a big part of the story a big rumor for a while and so getting it out there actually you know they've announced the product but actually getting it to the market and letting people get their hands on it it's going to be a big enough event for really just one product all right robert muller a enterprise hardware analyst at rbc great to have you on have a good weekend thank you you too